Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual global conference on biodiversity finance. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank UNDP for our strong collaboration. This joint meeting by the UNDP's Biodiversity Finance Initiative, uh, Biofin, and the OECD's Biodiversity, Land Use, and Ecosystems Program, Blue, will be critical in sharing experiences and insights on how to scale up biodiversity finance. Today's COVID-19 global crisis is a stark reminder of the complex links between the transmission of infectious diseases and biodiversity. In fact, biodiversity loss is associated with the transmission or the severity of disease for a range of pathogens. While land conversion, as well as the wildlife trade, bring more people into contact with potentially new diseases. And biodiversity loss continues. Around one million species already face extinction, with extinction rates at between tens to hundreds of times greater than over the past 10 million years. Safeguarding biodiversity can help reduce future health risks, making our societies more resilient. But the benefits of biodiversity go far beyond disease protection, contributing to global public goods. By managing ecosystems of agricultural landscapes and maintaining the richness of tropical forests, we ensure greater carbon sequestration and global genetic diversity. It is estimated that marine and terrestrial ecosystems sequester in gross terms the equivalent of 60% of human carbon dioxide emissions. 60%. This is why we need to move towards an ambitious, effective, post-2020 global biodiversity framework under the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. The implementation of this framework, however, requires adequate financial resources, a higher volume of resources, and more effective finance solutions are indispensable. Building on lessons learned to date, we have the opportunity today and over the course of the following weeks to reflect on how to further scale up and further improve the effectiveness of biodiversity finance. Now, the OECD has been focusing on aligning these efforts to achieve our finance ambitions. Let me briefly provide you a few key examples. First, it is important to start with the state of play of global biodiversity finance. At the request of the G7 environment ministers, we have just released a new report entitled A Comprehensive Overview of biodiversity finance. This report estimates that biodiversity finance uh, should, it's about 78 to 91 billion per year. Second, data availability, data comparability remain critical. 
The OECD tracks consistent data across countries, which includes monitoring progress towards the Aichi targets on positive incentives and resource mobilization. Biodiversity relevant taxes, for example, generate at least seven and a half billion US dollars a year. And we're proud to work with a, a range of countries beyond our membership in these efforts. And by the way, we encourage others to contribute to our databases. If we do it together, we'll do it better. Third, we have been establishing partnerships such as the Paris Collaborative on Green Budgeting. It focuses on directly supporting governments in aligning their national budgets with biodiversity, climate, and other environmental objectives. And last but not least, our actions going forward will be futile without the reform of public spending that harms biodiversity. We need more ambitious, better aligned policies to protect biodiversity. Today, government support to fossil fuels, to agricultural practices, fisheries practices that are potentially harmful to biodiversity is many times larger than the total finance flows to protect biodiversity. It's an enormous paradox. It's an enormous contradiction. In all of this, our efforts will be ineffective if we do not ensure that our policies and actions protect the most vulnerable households and the most vulnerable communities, and that they stand to gain from these reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 is a powerful messenger with a powerful message. The message is our system is broken and we cannot go back to business as usual. We need to build new economic systems that value nature as a central source of our health and our well-being. Let's remember the words of Johann Rockström. I quote, The value of biodiversity is that it makes our ecosystems more resilient, which is a prerequisite for stable societies. Its wanton destruction is akin to setting fire to our lifeboat." Unquote. I wish you all an excellent conference. Thank you.